At Partner 2023, the Serbian Army presents two new anti-tank guided vehicles. The first vehicle is equipped with the Cornet, a Soviet-made anti-tank guided missile, and the other one is the vehicle equipped with the Fagot. The main difference is the Fagot is guided, it's a wire-guided missile, while Cornet is a laser-guided missile. The first vehicle, if you can see here, is the vehicles equipped with the Cornet system. The vehicle has two launchers, one mounted on the roof of the vehicles with one vehicle with one missile mounted in boxes on each side of the main weapon station. There is also at the front one 7.62 mm EV machine gun which can be used for the self-protection of the vehicle. The vehicle maintains the internal layout of the traditional MV, but the cargo area carries two missiles and one missile launcher. Then, in this case, the crew can use the second launcher system with the tripod to operate the launcher system on the ground. The second version of new anti-tank vehicles use the Soviet-made Fagot. As I explained previously, the Fagot is a wire-guided missile with a maximum range of 2,500 mm but the layout is very similar to the previous vehicle. On the roof of the vehicles, the missile launcher system with two missiles mounted on each side of the turret, one 7.62 mm machine gun for the self-protection of the vehicles, and as the other vehicles, the cargo area at the rear of the MV carries one more launcher station and also two spare parts of missile. My name is Nenad Miloradovic. I'm a Deputy Minister of Defence for Material Resources, generally in charge of defence technologies, development, uh, production, uh, and so on and so forth, and implementation in the military of Serbia. So the, uh, this is the 11th show, and every, every time it is better and better. And it is really important because uh, this is the, the, the real opportunity for the, uh, all of our industry, the users, the uh, international partners, and most importantly these days supply chain, the people who we work with, I mean the, on the industrial base, all the time, uh, from both locally and globally, to come together, see what is happening uh, and uh, do some uh, uh, plans for future. Well, we are doing our best to be in this, in this league. It goes along with the country strategy which did not change for a very long time. We, we, we are just celebrating something like 170 years of industrial weapon making in this country. And it goes more, it's more a matter of geography than of, of, than of politics. Uh, we have to, uh, the country is simply in that position, and it does not change for ages now, uh, in a position that it has the, 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 the only viable strategy is to uh, provide the defense technologies and the capability of the military on the level to serve the most important uh, mission, meaning to protect the country in this ever growing and more complex uh, environment for achieving this mission. So this is simply a must. Now, how come we are on this technological level again? Very long tradition, huge uh, how should I say, investment by the government, predominantly by the government into defense technologies. And probably the most important factor is uh, a talented engineering core, which is, which is making all of this happening. We are, you know, there, there, as far as we know, there are no longer, how should I say, island industries totally self-contained uh, and uh, do not need anybody else to to produce uh, any kind of weapon, let alone complex weapon systems. We are quite happy with the progress of cooperation with various, uh, uh, both uh, on the industrial level, industrial players and some uh, friendly nations in order to achieve uh, uh, this level of uh, especially complex weapon systems production. And nowadays everybody is uh, in this, in this uh, sector is uh, energized, shocked, confused and so on with what is happening in, uh, in, the, in the war in our region and the acceleration of bringing technologies to a following level, uh, reassessing on what was uh, considered to be dramatically important until the one and a half year ago and what seems to be the way forward is happening constantly and some things need to be changed, readapted and uh, we have done, among other things which are exhibited here, are our latest efforts which are clearly influenced but by what is happening uh, in that conflict. So uh, uh, co cooperation with, uh, with uh, both on a national level, ministries to ministries, and uh, on the industrial level is a must. 
and it has to be brought to the next more intense uh, both uh, uh, investment funds in a shortened time to do that and um, uh, a much more increased, uh, how should I say, capability levels that the new generation of weaponry has to provide. A, that's a must. Serbia is uh, fully open to do so and we are, uh, we are reaching for, uh, for the partners globally and especially in our region and of course with, uh, and in, with, with major European players. This is our goal, this is our strategy, and we intend to be more and more integrated in, into these, uh, how should I say, systems. One of the new products launched at uh, Partner 2023 is a new mobile combat loitering munition launching system. In this case, you can see that the system is based on the Zastava light vehicles, which can carry two different types of drones. First, the reconnaissance drones named Vrabak. It's a short-range unmanned aerial system, which is used for reconnaissance and search mission. But this wound can be also armed with small grenades mounted under the wings. The team of the vehicle used first the reconnaissance wounds to perform reconnaissance missions. And after that, the second operator can launch loitering munition called Ozitska, which can be used to conduct attacks against armored and tanks vehicles. The front of the loitering munition is equipped with a warhead, 1.5 kilos, and the system is able to penetrate 500 mm of armor. We will see the internal layout of the vehicle. The vehicle has a crew of five, including at the front the driver and the commander, and three seat position at the rear of the vehicles. Left side you can see the computer for the operator who will control the reconnaissance drones. In the middle, the chief of the vehicles, and on the right side, the operator who conduct all the operations for the loitering munition. Behind me, you can see a new reconnaissance armored vehicles, which are now in service with the Serbian Armed Forces. This is a donation from Russia. It is based on the BRDM-2MS. It's a modernized version of the Soviet-made BRDM-2. But the vehicle now fitted with a special armor designed in Serbia with composite armor mounted all around the vehicles to increase ballistics and mine protection to level 4, Stanak 4569. The layout of the vehicle is very similar to the Soviet-made BRM-2, but the turret is equipped with new thermal version system and laser rangefinder. The turret is armored with one 45mm EV machine gun and one 7.62mm machine gun. The vehicle can use also drones to perform reconnaissance missions and provide data and information about the reconnaissance to headquarters via a battle management system. You can see also at all around the vehicles cameras who provide awareness around 360 degrees at a range of maximum 300 meters. 